Hello guys, welcome to Biotorial. This is Mansi Joshi back again with another video on the topic structure of DNA. So in this video we shall study about the structure of DNA. How DNA is having its double stranded structure, what are nitrogenous bases. We shall also learn about the purines and pyrimidines. We shall also learn about the dimension of the DNA and many more things we are going to cover in this video. So let's get started. So starting with the introduction. DNA was discovered in 1950s by James Watson, Maurice Wilkins and Francis Crick. So they also uh, won a Nobel Prize for the discovery of DNA and also for stating the structure of DNA. So moving on to the structure of DNA. So we all know that DNA is made up of double strands. Okay. So these are the double strands and there are some bridge kind of structure that attaches these two strands together. Okay. So we just have that basic kind of knowledge. But now let us learn this in more detail. So DNA is made up of three major components. So the first component here is deoxyribose sugar. Why deoxyribose sugar? Because normally in ribose sugar we have O also present over here. Okay. But since in DNA this O is removed we call it as deoxyribose sugar. And that is why the full form of DNA becomes deoxyribose nucleic acid okay so you know now that why is this deoxyribo name here and nucleic acid because it is always present in the nucleus dna is present inside the nucleus of cell okay so this is the major component second major component of the dna is the phosphate group okay so in the phosphate group this phosphorus is present as a major element okay important element and this phosphate group will make dna acidic and that is why we call deoxyribose nucleic acid okay so this acid comes because this dna is acidic in nature due to the presence of phosphate group and the third major component is nitrogenous base okay so there are two types of nitrogenous base in dna and that we will learn about later in the further slides. So this is the third major component. And when these three components come together, we can form a single linear strand of DNA. Okay. So in this particular image, I have shown how they are linked with each other. This is the phosphate group, which is attached to the deoxyribose sugar here. Okay. It is attached from here. And later on, this deoxyribose sugar also has nitrogenous bases beside it. Okay. Now this particular unit, we can call it as unit. This keeps on repeating. You all can see it is repeating again over here. Only the nitrogenous base that is changing here. Otherwise everything is same and it is repeating. So it repeats like this and forms a linear strand. Okay. So this single strand is made like this in the linear shape and here there are this nitrogenous bases because they are also situated here laterally. So here we can see the nitrogenous bases. Later comes another strand. Okay. Again with its nitrogenous bases. Okay. So this is how the DNA is formed. Okay. When there is bonding between these two nitrogenous bases from two different uh, strands, we can say the linear uh, linear DNA DNA is formed, not linear, sorry. So we can say that DNA is formed. Now, when this D three components that is deoxyribose sugar plus nitrogenous bases and phosphate group, when these three come together, we can say that they are forming a nucleotide. So, in this previous slide, we saw that this single unit which was repeating again and again is known as nucleotide okay so this is known as nucleotide and what if i remove this 
phosphor phosphate group from the nucleotide now i am left with only deoxyribose sugar and the nitrogenous bases okay so when i have only these two components i don't have phosphate with me then i can say that i have is nucleoside okay i just have deoxyribose sugar and nitrogenous bases understood now moving on to the next slide where we'll study about the nitrogenous bases so there are two groups of nitrogenous bases the first one is purine another one is pyrimidine now in purine we have only two major molecules that is adenine and guanine we can denote it simply as a and capital g okay likewise in pyrimidines we have cytosine thymine and uracil okay they are denoted by their initials in capital c capital t capital u okay so this is how they are denoted and why there are two present over here two molecules here and why three here because when you consider dna okay so dna will only have cytosine and thymine okay but when we consider rna rna will have cytosine and uracil only as pyrimidines okay it will never have thymine similarly in dna there is no uracil there is only thymine and cytosine as pyrimidines and now we will learn about the bonding between the purines and pyrimidines so adenine is best friend of thymine okay if it is dna then adenine will always and always bond with thymine only and if it is rna then adenine will always bond with uracil only okay so they are best friends they will always bond with each other they will not go and bond with guanine or they will not go and bond with cytosine okay so they are best friends they will always make their pair okay and when we consider guanine so best friend of guanine is cytosine so guanine will always pair with cytosine and cytosine will always pair with guanine so they are best friends now when i see that adenine is pairing with thymine or uracil i always see that there are two bonds now these bonds are known as hydrogen bonds okay they will always bond with each other with the help of double hydrogen bonds okay double hydrogen bonds whereas when i see guanine and cytosine i see that they are bonded with triple hydrogen bonds okay here we'll have three hydrogen bonds and here we have only two hydrogen bonds so is this clear clear that purines will always pair with pyrimidines only and adenine will have its own best friend that is thymine if it is dna and uracil if it is rna guanine will always have cytosine as its best friend okay so moving forward we'll learn about the dimension of dna so consider this as a whole strand of dna okay so here we see that this is strand number 1 this is strand number 2 okay so the distance between this two strand is 2 nanometers okay it is 2 nanometers now what if i unwind this whole strand okay this is winded okay it is having many turns on it and if i unwind it will look somewhat like this okay so here we can see and make it much more clear that the distance between these two strands that is this one and this one is 2 nanometers okay and here in middle we have many base pairs nitrogenous bases are present over here now in this picture we see that there is uh, there are two types of turns the one that we see is the bigger turn and another one that we see is the smaller turn so here we see this one is the bigger turn and this one is the smaller turn so they are known as major groove which means the bigger turn and minor groove which means this smaller turn okay so the distance between this two turns is 3.4 nanometers understood 
it is the distance between these two terms so now we have another thing that is base pairs we have these two base pairs okay so there has to be certain distance between these two base pairs okay because they are not stick uh, stuck so we have distance of 0.34 nanometers between these two base pairs okay so generally we always have 0.34 nanometers distance between any base pair on a single strand okay so that was about the dimension of dna so normally we see that in humans the dna is 1 to 2 meters long okay so it cannot exit more than that but in humans generally it is 1 to 2 meters long and there are many dna dna is present inside the nucleus that is not just a single dna so how this long dna will uh, locate itself inside such a microscopic nucleus what does it it does it coils and super coils what does that mean now suppose this is a straight dna now this one is too long to fit inside the nucleus so it is going to coil okay when it coils like this it condenses itself okay so the length has decreased although the length remains same but it is uh, packaging itself in this manner by coiling itself now we have seen the telephone wires also they are pretty long but they also coil themselves okay so they are designed in such a way so they coil and super coil and they condense and package itself inside the microscopic nucleus now apart from this what does this dna carry this dna carries small sections okay which are known as genes there are small sections of nitrogenous bases the pattern or arrangement of this nitrogenous bases can reveal the type of gene okay so these small sections they form gene and this gene uh, carries the genetic information of that person and hence can control the cell the working of cell also how the cell will produce proteins how rna will form how the cell will divide and at the time of division how the uh, dna will replicate every information is present in this small sections of genes okay so it has all the information to control the cell also now this is the summary where i'll you know condense everything whatever i have taught in this particular presentation so first of all dna is double helical structure okay it is double stranded plus it is helical it has twists also it constitutes of three major components that is deoxyribose sugar nitrogenous bases and phosphate group nitrogenous bases are of two types that is purines and pyrimidines purines have adenine and guanine pyrimidines have cytosine and thymine adenine will always pair with thymine or uracil uracil is for rna and guanine will always pair with cytosine now distance between the two strands of dna is 2 nanometers distance between the two base pairs is 0.34 nanometers now one turn is about 3.4 nanometers long and human dna is generally 1 to 2 meters long dna has all the genetic information that can control the cell also or the protein rnas and the other dnas are made from the dna itself okay how because dna has all the information how to produce what to produce and why to produce and when to produce everything is decided by the dna itself okay so that important is dna now in next lecture i'll be covering rna and its types and also i'll discuss about the function of rna so guys that's it for today's video uh, subscribe to our channel like this video and share it with your friends and stay tuned for the next video until then this is Mansi Joshi signing off